Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, Necropolis 2350. This is a Savage World set... All right, for those of you who just turned it off because you're tired of me saying Savage Worlds, be patient, it's okay. This is a Savage Worlds setting. This requires the Savage Worlds Explorer's Guide or some other variant on their rule set. This is really interesting. A lot of the Savage World setting, I'm kind of looking at going, were they trying to do this particular licensed property and didn't quite get it? If I had to say this feels like something, this feels kind of like Warhammer 40K. But it's not a clone. It's not a ripoff. It's not them doing, it's not them doing like, um, big scary battle hammer 50,000. That's not what this is at all. This is a setting on another world, a world called Salius. And on Salus, there is, essentially, it's the last bastion of humanity. The church has come into very strong prominence, and there's churches, there's industrial states, and there are all the undead and the other evil forces that are also on the planet that are constantly besieging you. This is very much a battle combat focused game. That's what this is. Now, that being said, the characters are members of these Knights of the Sacra Ordines, which are the holy orders of knights of this church, and the different orders do different things. Characters in this are a wee bit more powerful in terms of starting abilities than in other savage settings, but let's face it, in this, you really need it. So, this also gives you a plot point campaign, which is an entire shorter than some, but an entire campaign that takes you from point A to point B in sort of exposing you to this war, how it operates, what the stakes are, and how you can find it. Unlike some of the other plot point campaigns and other settings that we've discussed, such as Sundered Skies, such as Slipstream, this plot point campaign doesn't completely change the world by the end of it. It's one battle in one part of the setting that really can help or hinder your cause, but it doesn't obviate everything else in the book, like, say, the Sundered Skies plot point campaign really did. That one, by the end of it, you reset a lot of the game. This is really cool because it gives you some new combat options. It gives you some different weaponry, some really interesting weaponry, sort of like, and I'm going to particularly find this one because I like it. It's the Heartbreaker, which is a spear with an explosive on the end of it. This almost, and I, I hesitate to say this because I'm, I'm sure this was not their intent, but sometimes I get the feeling that I wonder if you could almost play a generational game with some of these savage settings. For example, starting with Rippers. That from Rippers, you can play through the setting and then segue into something like a Tour of Darkness, which, is a, which we haven't reviewed yet. We will soon. It's a Vietnam War with the forces of darkness allying against you in Asia. And then you could skip ahead in time to this one, which is the sort of on another planet, the last bastion of humanity, fighting the good fight there. One of the things that I like about this is it's, it's a very pretty book. I like the art. It's well put together. I don't get the feeling that this book is going to explode on me the first time I open it up. I feel like the art is very evocative for the setting. And it's made by Triple Ace Games. Now, these are the nice people who brought you the Daring Tales of Adventure series that we reviewed earlier. They are a licensee, if that's the right word, of the Savage Worlds system. They produce a lot of good Savage World work. And I look forward to seeing more, more of what they have in the future. Why should you get Necropolis 2350? If you're looking for a science fiction military campaign, something along the lines of Space Above and Beyond, or as a friend of mine calls it, Space Abort and Beyond, or say Starship Troopers without all the nasty bugs, if you want to put in a certain almost mystical or religious aspect to it, and you like Savage Worlds, let's, let's face it, if you've watched the show lately, you know I do. This is a really good way to incorporate those concepts into a very much what feels like a rock'em sock'em war game. Not war game in terms of like, I move my army three inches this way. A war game in terms of you're constantly in battle. What does it mean to be a soldier? What does it mean to be a religious soldier? There's like a hierarchy of sins that can get you from flogged to excommunicated to the ever popular burning at the stake. This is a really cool game. I recommend you get it if those are the sorts of things that you're interested in. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.